Okay, folks, today we are going to look at the what we call the triangle proportionality theorem and actually two others. We've talked a lot about similar triangles, so we're going to pick up right where you left off, but then we're going to discover something new. So my first question for you is, looking at the two triangles that we have here, do we have a pair of similar triangles? Hopefully you're saying yes. Go through this kind of quickly because you've done this. We've got parallel lines indicating that we have a pair of corresponding angles, angle D and angle C. We also have a corresponding angle pair at the top, or we could use the shared pair there. And by angle, angle, um, we do have a pair of similar triangles. So go ahead and just for practice, name the similar triangles, and then I want you to set me up an extended ratio or extended proportion with your pairs of corresponding sides. See if you can do that. possible similarity statement would have been triangle AEB is similar to triangle ABC. You could have re rearranged those as long as you rearranged them both. Ratios of corresponding sides. I went ahead and did AE, match that up, of course, with AB for the bigger one, and follow along the rest of them, AD for my small triangle to AC, and the last one, D, E, and B, C. And if it helps you, you can redraw the two triangles. We're comparing small triangle to big triangle. Small triangle measurements were on the top here. Big triangle measurements were on the bottom. That's not new news. That's all stuff that you've seen before. My question to you is, are there actually something else going on here that we haven't talked about? Is there another set of proportions that we can make based on parts of lengths here? So we're going to do a little bit of experimenting real quick. We're going to go ahead and have this fancy file show us the side lengths. So it's showing us the lengths, and I'm going to clean up the picture here a little bit. And now it's actually going to make ratios of sections. So we're just talking about AB and the two sections created on it, and then AC and the two sections created on it. Now, this is a little bit small, but if you can see the ratio AE to EB that we have right here, you're probably more familiar with seeing that this way as a fraction. That's fine. They're both acceptable ways of writing it. And then we've got a fraction on the bottom part, AD to DC. So we're comparing the two parts on the top and the two parts on the bottom. Of course, if we flip our picture, two parts on the right, two parts on the left. Watch what happens as I drag that line in the middle along the edge here, keeping it parallel, of course. Lengths changed. What happened to my numbers over here? Now they're both 2.51. Whoops, I didn't actually go on top of it. 2.51 for the lengths for the ratios. Let's keep going. Changed it, both 4.11. And if you notice, as I drag it, the ratio, remember we're dividing the two parts, stays the same for all of them. That's a pretty interesting relationship that we like to look at. And it's actually a really nice shortcut. We've been telling you you can't use the parts, and when you're making ratios of corresponding sides, you can. But we actually do know by the triangle proportionality theorem, that we can compare the parts of the little triangle, AE and AD, with not only the entire length, which we just did, that guy, but also these other parts that aren't sides of the triangle are all just are the extra parts there. And that's what we have down there. So notice the denominator did change. Okay, that's your first theorem. Um, we're going to go ahead and look at what that looks like in the textbook. So if you want to open your textbook or you want to just follow along, we're on page 490. And drag this a little bit so you can see. This is theorem 7-5, triangle proportionality theorem. And here's how it sounds in words. If a line is parallel to one side of a triangle, and intersects the other two sides, then it divides the sides into segments of proportional lengths. And there's a nice example for you, just like we just talked about. 
AB over BC equal to AE over EB. If you want to pause the video, write that down. Great idea. First theorem for your notes, we're going to have two more. Before we go on to the other two, one thing that I want to spend a brief amount of time on, and that would be we just had the top proportion that we were looking at in relation to the triangle that's still pictured there. And I want to know which proportions would actually be equivalent. Are there other ways that we could write this proportion? So look at the two below that and just kind of decide for yourself, do you think either of those is equivalent to what we have at the top? You should have said yes to one and no to the other. And the easiest way to look at whether proportions are equivalent is to actually do the cross products. And if we look at our cross products, here's what I'm doing. I'm multiplying AE times BC, that's right there, and it's equal to AB times EB. Doesn't matter which order you have it in. If you do it the other way, or if you do it with the, the next proportion, AE times BC equals AD times EB. Notice we get the same thing. Not the same proportion that we started with, but the cross products are equal. This one is a yes. The proportions are considered equivalent. When you get to the bottom one, AE times EB, not matching AE times DC. Here they were the same. Nope. No good. So we, when we changed orders a second time, no good. What's that mean in terms of how I set it up and how I change things. Well, if you look at the top example, the one that we originally had, I like to say we did the parts of the two sides. Okay, it's almost like you extend, and this is my favorite way to look at it, it's almost like you extend that parallel line and you take the ratio of the one part over the other and then the ratio of the other side, those two parts. Okay, again, I'm just gonna highlight one more time. AD and AE were my blue parts in my picture. EB and DC were the red parts, the bottom parts or the right-hand parts in this case. And the equivalent one, notice where AE and AB are. These two parts at the tip are making a ratio now, and EB and DC are my other one. So we kind of just turned the proportion that we had up here, we kind of just turned it on its side to get what we have there. So notice if you're looking at the picture, we're actually taking the ratio of these two parts, and then we're taking the ratio of these two parts. That's good, it works. The following one doesn't work, and that's because we took the ratio of AE, and then we put it over DC. You cannot make your ratios by going across. You have to either do parts next to each other, or parts on the same side, but on different parts of your drawing. Okay, so no good to that bottom one, but the other two are good examples of how you can vary this a little bit. I said there are two others that we'd like to go through. We'll go through these a little bit quicker. So on to the second one. Give me a second to clean up my screen here. I like to think of this as an extension of the triangle proportionality theorem. It's called the parallel lines proportionality theorem. And basically, we're just getting rid of the triangle. You have a triangle at the bottom of the screen there, and it just goes off, and I'm not worried about the tip. I'm looking at the parallel lines, clearly marked, FD, CE, and AB are all parallel. If I take the lengths of the divided sections, not necessarily the same, I would not say that CE is halfway between AB and FD, because clearly I have different lengths for my segments. If I take the ratios of those divided sections, the first one is giving me the ratio of AC to, the, to CF, and they're telling me that that is 1.39 over here. Ratio, again, if you'd rather see it this way, AC over CF, that's fine. And then the second one is telling me the ratio of BE to ED, that should look an awful lot like what we just had, except again, it doesn't make a triangle. 
Right now, they're the same. They're both 1.39. I'm never convinced by one example. I don't know about you. I'm never convinced that it's always going to be true. So let's experiment. How are we going to experiment? I'm going to take, oh, get rid of that. I'm going to take my point and I'm going to drag this line and I'm going to change it so that C is actually closer to the other part. Check out your ratios. They're both 0.32 this time, but they stayed the same. And of course, as we drag that along, you'll notice those numbers. I can stop at any point. The ratios are always the same. And there would be a point somewhere in here where the ratio would actually be 1. And that would be when what is true about your two parts. I know it's not quite there, of course. Okay, triangle proportionality theorem. Good idea for us to write this one down. Flip two pages in your book to page 492. And give me a second. I'm finding it here. Or you can open your book. Um, there it is, at the bottom of the page there. Corollary 7.1, proportional parts of parallel lines. It would be a good time to pause and write down that lovely little box as your example. Then resume the video when you're ready for the third and final theorem. Getting there. Third one is what we call our angle bisector theorem. And I like this one because it makes us really stop and think. We've talked a whole lot about isosceles triangles. We talked, talked about dropping an altitude from the vertex angle. And we're really used to doing things like or seeing situations where we have angles congruent and what happens to my segment down here. And most of you are thinking that. And most of you are thinking this. The altitude divides the angle in half and divides the segment at the bottom in half, the base. Really important that we recognize that is only true when we start with an isosceles triangle. So what happens when it's not an isosceles triangle? Is there any relationship? And the answer is there's a similar, not similar triangles, but there is a proportional relationship. So big jump here. I'm not saying anything about triangles created in this picture being similar, but we are going to examine the relationships between the lengths. So, point E, not necessarily between B, C. In fact, let's get the side lengths there. And when I get the side lengths, clearly different lengths. No isosceles triangle going on here. What's the relationship? Go ahead and take a guess if you want. Let's do some division. So we're taking B, E over A, B. B, E is part, I'm not going to say half, Part of my third side across from the angle that's being divided in half over AB is one of the two sides of my triangle. Notice it's a side on the same part that I was just on. And then we're going to take that and compare that to CE over AC. Those are the two ratios that I just talked you through. They're both 0.72 right now. Not going to be convinced just by one example. I'm going to move my picture around, so I'm going to drag any point that I want. And of course, I probably should clear up my picture. Don't need get rid of that line. Get rid of this one. Get out of there. And take a look at your ratios. Now they're both 0.6. Drag it some more. 0.87. And hopefully you can see that as I'm dragging this, there would be a point where we could make the two lengths exactly the same and make it an isosceles triangle, but not necessarily. And kind of the longer you drag it, the more off they get in terms of lengths, but still have the same decimal, same ratio. That's your third theorem. Of course, that one is in your textbook, so either skip a few pages in your textbook. Page 504 is what we want to look at. And it is at the top of the page there. Theorem 711, the triangle angle bisector. Really important that we do have an angle bisector there. None of this is true, of course, without starting with that angle bisector. Just want to point out, you could set this up the other way. You could also set it up by doing a ratio 
of these two parts, Km and Kj, okay, because in this one they actually, that's what we just looked at, where we did the ratio of these two equal to the ratio of these two, as long as you go in the same order, okay? They chose to set it up in the example here, Km over Lm, and they did, hey, the ratio of the two parts here to the ratio of the two sides. Check your cross products, equals or proportions. That's it for this. Make sure you've got the notes written down, these three theorems, and we'll pick up with examples next time we work.